All right then, so today I thought I'd run through what I think are the top five assault rifle loadouts right now for Warzone. Since Raven recently nerfed the DMR, there's now a lot more options open to you again to be effective in gunfights. And I'm gonna bring together some of my old favorite loadouts and a couple of new ones that I think you can use, the ones that will get you more kills and hopefully more wins in Warzone. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more loadout videos coming soon on some of the less spoken about weapons. The Pellington's on my list, the M60 light machine gun, maybe the Bullfrog SMG, if I can get the attachments unlocked in time. And if you enjoy this video as well, these top loadouts, then drop the video a like too. Okay then, first up, let's talk about a weapon that I think really does get overlooked in Warzone, the Ram 7. This is a properly powerful mid to long range option for your loadout, ideal to pair with a sniper rifle or an SMG, it can adapt to both different playstyles. It's one of the few weapons in Warzone where the recoil pulls up and across to the left, as opposed to the right, and that might be one of the reasons why people don't really use it as much, but I can't really put my finger on why people don't use it. I think it's a great option, and you should definitely have a build in your mind for this gun. So the loadout I go for is the monolithic suppressor combined with the FSS Ranger barrel for the biggest increases to damage range and bullet velocity. Damage range goes up by 51%, pushing the range at which you do the max damage per shot to 42 meters, which is pretty far out to be honest. Bullet velocity increases from 720 meters per second all the way up to 1,341 meters per second. That makes it ideal as a mid to long range assault rifle. Your bullets are gonna reach the target faster. That means less leading on your targets at longer ranges. Now to complement that, you're gonna want to use an optic that allows you to see better for those mid to long range gunfights. And the VLK is probably your best option here. Alongside being a three time zoom, which is really nice. And it has a good reticle, a, a good default reticle anyway. It also applies a nice 11% vertical and 20% horizontal recoil reduction, helping to really tighten things up quite nicely and reduce that left hand pull quite considerably. It's worth noting the FSS Ranger Barrel also gives you another 20% vertical recoil decrease as well, so this build is properly going for a flattening out of the recoil pattern. Then take the Commando Foregrip for even more recoil reductions. This time it's a 6% vertical decrease and a 15% horizontal decrease, but also, you don't get any penalty to your ADS time, which is important. This build for the Ram 7, it does add a fair bit of weight to the gun, which affects your movement speed, but also your ADS time. The Commando doesn't hurt you even more, which is a nice benefit. And then finally, 50 round mags for helping take down multiple enemies per reload, or finishing off a downed player before having to reload. This is a loadout that I really like, have liked for some time, and will probably do a video on again in the future. Next up, let's talk about the FFAR, or the FAFAR, or the Full Auto FAMAS, whatever you want to call it. This is fast becoming one of the go-to picks for players in Warzone, thanks to its relatively strong damage output for the fire rate it possesses. It comes in at 900 rounds per minute, which is really fast. It's a gun that I've made a few videos on already. I identified this gun pretty much day one of the Cold War integration as being one of the best ones that you can use. And I've actually got another round to post next week with Benny Central. We managed to win a trios match as a duo in a Diamond 1 top 1% lobby using this FFAR build that I'm about to show you. Starting off, we take the Agency Suppressor for a 10% damage range increase and 25% bullet velocity increase. The Agency Suppressor is currently more powerful an attachment than the Monolithic Suppressor, which gives the Cold War guns a little bit of extra help. Then you've got a decision to make when picking the barrel. I think there's two options here, either the Ranger to focus everything on bullet velocity, giving you a big boost, or the Task Force barrel for a more rounded boost to other areas as well. Taking the Ranger, that boosts your bullet velocity to 1,232 meters per second, with the Agency Suppressor attached to it as well, making it even more competitive in the mid to long range gunfights, but you do have to put up with the FFAR's recoil, but we'll talk about that in a second. The Task Force Barrel, that gives you a bullet velocity increase, although not as much as the Ranger does, but it also gives you a damage range increase and a horizontal recoil decrease. This boosts the max damage range out to 43 meters, 
and with a rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute, doing max damage out to 43 meters, yeah, it absolutely blitzes people. The Task Force Barrel does give you a 23% increase in vertical recoil, so be aware of that, but we can almost completely negate it by adding the currently broken Bruiser Grip. This currently decreases vertical recoil on all Cold War Assault Rifles by about 20%, cancelling out the Task Force vertical recoil increase almost completely. The Bruiser also beats the Field Agent Grip by decreasing vertical recoil further than that grip, so you should be taking this on Cold War Assault Rifles pretty much every single time you launch into a game. Fourth attachment is the 50 round salvo mags for more ammunition, which is always good, and somewhat better timings of reload animation and reload timer. Cold War guns have a really big issue with this at the moment, and hopefully that gets fixed soon. And then finally, I'm using the Microflex LED optic for a really nice clear picture. This FFAR is a really strong gun in Warzone right now, thanks to that large max damage range out to 43 meters and the blisteringly fast 900 round per minute rate of fire. This should be a gun that you're using in Warzone at the moment. Then the third gun, I'd say the AS Val still has a really strong place in the front line of assault rifles thanks to its high damage output. The only thing that really lets it down is the limited ammunition options. The max mag size is only 30. So with that in mind, I'd recommend setting up the AS Val as a close range assault rifle for taking down people just as quickly as possible. The VLK Osa barrel has an integrated suppressor for keeping you off the minimap as well as increasing your damage range and bullet velocity. Then take the Commando foregrip for reducing vertical and horizontal recoil whilst not increasing your ADS time, really important for close range fights. Then take the 30 round mags as I've already said, GI mini reflex for keeping you focused on close range fights and not letting you go into the mid range where the AS Val doesn't have the bullet velocity to compete properly and then the VLK Strelok stock for further vertical recoil reductions. The AS Val, despite only having 30 round mags, is absolutely top tier if you're focusing solely on close range use. And it pairs really well with something like the Car 98, a quick firing sniper rifle that then works well in the mid to long range. They complement each other really nicely. Then the fourth assault rifle on my list, I'm gonna throw the Grozer up here. This thing is really nice. I've only recently discovered it, but if you saw my video the other day using a not fully maxed out version of it and still doing really well, you're going to know that this is a good assault rifle. I have now fully maxed the gun. Thank you, Double Weapon XP and Plunder. I've managed to get all the attachments that I need, and I can now share with you what I think is the best loadout for the Grozer. Start off with the GRU suppressor. This is essentially the agency suppressor for a nice 10% damage range and 25% bullet velocity increase. Then take the GRU composite barrel for max bullet velocity on top of what the suppressor gave you, taking things right up there to compete with the likes of the M4, the Ram 7 and the Growl. Then take the Bruiser Grip for that 20% vertical recoil reduction on all Cold War guns at the moment, even though the Bruiser is not supposed to do that and it helps keep some of those more erratic recoil climbs under control. That's one thing you do have to be aware of with the Grozer. It does have some fairly erratic recoil. Then take the 60 round fast mag for the most bullets before having to reload. And finally, the SAS combat stock for really fast shooting movement speed and aim walking movement speed. So when you're aim, aim down sight, you can move around really fast. It's like sliding around on skates using this stock on any of the Cold War guns really. This Grozer, it's right up there for me with the FFAR as one of the best Cold War weapons added to Warzone. And although I think it's somewhat range limited because of that recoil that I've already mentioned, if you can learn to burst fire it, maybe three, four or five bullets per burst, you can keep that recoil under control and you're gonna kill a lot of people using this gun. And last but not least, my fifth assault rifle loadout that I think is one of the best in Warzone right now, it's the AMAX. I did a video on this the other day, but essentially the AMAX took a six week break whilst the DMR was top dog and now it's back where it belongs. Monolithic suppressor, Zodiac long barrel, 45 round magazines, Ranger foregrip and PBX hollow sight. You can switch the sight out for anything you want. If you want to go for mid to long range and use that damage at range with the AMAX, 
go with the VLK. Either of those, it's really, really good. I do believe this is going to become the new meta assault rifle in Warzone very soon, thanks to its high damage output and relatively low recoil with this build. But it still does have a lot more recoil than something like the Kilo that used to be the meta loadout. And I will still say that the Kilo is very, very good in Warzone, but that shadow nerf that it got at the beginning of the Cold War integration, it got nerfed alongside the R90 shotgun, but no one really said anything. That seemed to hit it pretty hard, and the Kilo's nowhere near as good as it used to be. But the fact that it still has no recoil means that you can land pretty much every shot you're firing. So perhaps the Kilo is like sixth on the list, but the AMAX is definitely up there as one of the best assault rifles in Warzone right now. So those are my top five assault rifle loadouts for Warzone. I'll probably do more of these videos in the future, maybe every couple of months or so, keeping things updated as Raven comes in and balances the Cold War guns again. Hopefully they do that because still all of the attachments don't do what they say they do and things do need to be fixed. And if they make any changes to the Modern Warfare guns as well, and of course there is the rumor that there will be a few more guns coming to Modern Warfare in the near future. We'll have to see if those end up on any of these top lists. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you did and I'll catch you in the next one.